Welcome to Organizational Analysis. Have you ever been in a business meeting trying to make a decision and find things go in an unexpected direction? Have you developed effective organizational practices that never seem to be remembered and have to be reinvented every single year? And have you ever wished your firm had a positive organizational culture that reinforced collaboration and valued experimentation instead of creating a go-it-alone atmosphere? And have you even wondered whether your company would make it in a different environment or social context? This course helps you answer these questions by exposing you to multiple theories of organizing and asking you to apply them to actual organizational cases. Each week you will learn a new perspective on organizational behavior. You will develop new strategies of managing and you'll be exposed to real-world cases in nonprofit and for-profit sectors. Over the 10 weeks we're together, you will learn there's nothing more practical than a good theory. Now, there are several tracks of coursework that you can choose from, and they're described in full detail on the course page, but briefly I want to relate some of them. If you would like to acquire a certificate of completion, then you need to watch the weekly videos, to participate regularly in the forum, to perform the standalone quizzes, and to take a final exam. If you'd like to receive a certificate with distinction, then you need to accomplish the basic certificate requirements as well as engage in paper writing exercises that call upon you to apply three theories to a case. Note that all the persons submitting a writing assignment must also perform peer assessments uh, of others' papers. Um, and you need to do that in order to get a grade. Now, peer assessment is a great way to learn the core skills being taught in the class. Not only do you get to see how others analyze a case, but you get to read interesting essays as well. If you'd like to take the course much like my master's students do at Stanford, then you need to complete the basic certificate requirements as well as write three full essays. Note once more that all the persons submitting a writing assignment must also perform assessments of their peers' papers if they are to get a grade. But again, peer assessment is a great way to learn, so I hope you do it. For accomplishing this advanced track, you will not only get a certificate with distinction, but correspondence from me acknowledging you completed the basic certificate and paper writing assignments akin to those Stanford students are asked to complete. I strongly encourage all of you to try and do the writing assignments and accomplish a certificate with distinction. Learning to write well and to apply the theories to real world cases is a key skill developed in this course. Moreover, assessing the writing of your peers is a great way to develop this skill even further. I hope many of you try to do the writing and peer assessment tasks. It will make the class experience one step closer to what it's like to be a Stanford student. Now, throughout this course, my teaching assistants and I will be looking for ways to engage with you and to improve the course. To this end, we're running a study on multimedia instruction that has become more and more important with the explosion of online learning resources. The study is on preferences for the presence or absence of the instructor's face in video lectures. Starting from week two of this course, all lecture videos will be offered in two versions, with and without my face. It's completely up to you to choose the version that you prefer and you think serves you best, and you can switch between versions as you wish. Now from time to time, we might ask you a question on your experience with these video lectures. Please take a few seconds to answer these questions as the outcomes of this study will have long-term and large-scale implications on lecture videos and online courses. In this course, I'm also going to be discussing various readings. Now, you're not required to purchase any of them. However, you may find the main texts and suggested optional readings especially useful and worthwhile uh, for you to, to take on, um, particularly if you would like a summary of the course or if you want to dig deeper into the material. To help with this, we'll be using SIPX, a new web service that provides access to reading materials. We took great care in choosing quality readings at the lowest possible cost to you. Sometimes these readings are under copyright ownership and you might need to pay copyright royalties to authors and publishers. We just can't get around that. The SIPEX service will manage these payment transactions for you and also make all digital documents, including those that don't require royalties. And they'll make these available for you in the most efficient and easy way possible for all our class readings. Last, I want to draw your attention to the fact that we have many forums on the website uh, at Coursera. If any of you have any questions or concerns about the materials or the process of, of the way the course goes, please post them there. We will try our best to respond to you in as quickly a way and as, as diligently a way as we can. Um, the goal of this course is to provide you with a wonderful learning experience and to share this kind of knowledge with the rest of the world. So I hope you uh, find us on the forum and engage us as much as you can.